Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Park and Recreation with a combination of Greenway Advisory Committee meeting for January 27, 2020. I think we have more than a quorum. Uh, I'll call this meeting to order. I need to uh, take a get an approval for the minutes from the last meeting. I need a motion to approve from the Park and Rec Board. I don't have the minutes, so I... <coughs> Kathy sent them in emails. She didn't I make a motion to didn't approve. get mine because I looked for mine. I didn't get mine either. You get the minutes from last meeting? That from November? No, December. We didn't, we didn't have a December. We didn't have a meeting in December. Or November. Yeah. I read them. Well, I make a motion to accept the minutes as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, this meeting tonight is going to be pretty much uh, the Reagan-Smith presentation about the uh, master plan for the parks. We want to welcome Vice Mayor Brown and her committee members here. Uh, so I guess, David, we'll just turn it over to you, and you can uh, get us started, and we'll sit back and hopefully have a good uh, viewing here. Yeah, we'll turn it over to Reagan Smith. They've been working on our master plan with some input from the community. So they're kind of here tonight to bring everybody up to speed as to where we're at at this point. Um, so I'll turn it over to Mr. Kevin and Mr. Matt if you guys are ready. And take it away. Yes, sir. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to be here again this evening. And... This is an ongoing process, as we had said at the beginning. So if you look over at this schedule, you'll see, and I'll kind of I'll tell you what I'm going to do. It, do I need to be at this microphone for the mic to recording to work, or can I move around? All over the place. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll grab a board and maybe scoot the mic this way. I don't suppose we have a wireless mic, Jerry. <coughs> so this is the overall process, and we are now kind of moving into what we call, you know, really taking this into uh, more of an analysis and recommendation phase. But I say that because I'm in the sense that I want to make sure everybody's clear any time in this process, if you get feedback from your constituents or you feel like you want to add additional comments, that never ends during the process. Uh, we've gotten some good feedback, but I'd really like to get some more. We'd like to beat the drum a little bit louder. We do have another public input meeting. We've had this public visioning session, but sometime, somewhere, somewhere probably in the towards the end of March, we'll have another public input meeting. And what I'd really like to do is get everybody in the Park Advisory Board, the Greenway Committee, to send out emails to everybody you know to get to that session. That one's going to be really good in March, especially because we will start to talk about the recommendations we're doing. And that's when we really want to make sure that we're getting tight feedback loops in our communication. Where will we have that at, David? Probably at the library. Um, again, it's kind of a more... Um, informal setting so hopefully we can capture some of those folks coming in the library that night also i think we may have already had that date scheduled as the 10th of march that's the c it says 3 10 20. yeah i think we had well that's the advisory committee um public vision session no, it says 3 10 20. yeah that's when we had set up here. 5 37 right. yes sir yes yes sir we that's were right. talking a little bit that about that before we sat down here, and I just don't remember getting any kind of emails about it. Carol got one, but just for my stupidity, Miss Kathy, if you could just make sure that we get those emails so we can, <coughs> as board members, can just blow it up because I didn't even advertise it at all. I didn't say anything about it. We did, or I received an email from Kathy. What? I did receive an email from you. That's like I said. That's my ignorance. Okay. Yeah. I'll yeah. I'm not. I'm didn't say you didn't do it. I, I know you did, but. Uh, back 
don't yeah. remember. That's a long time ago. Oh, no. The email for the public screening went out a week, a week prior to the public screening, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, but I'll send it out twice as a preliminary reminder and then again right before the event. That'd be great because we, we – my understanding, you only had like four or five people there, and those were board members. Which uh, was good. We had a chance to <clears throat> sit down and really circle around our ideas and get good one-to-one -one feedback. But obviously, in that 20th, if we start thinking about that now, absolutely, we're yeah, we it can now, get it out get there. A good turnout. Yeah. So we have a second uh, public forum scheduled for March 10th. The 20th of March. March the 20th. Yes, ma'am. And then yes, the, the third 10th. one, do you have oh, a... March the 10th. Yeah, I'm sorry. March the 10th. Yeah, March, March 10th. 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 Yes. March 3, 10, 10. 20, 20. Uh, and right. will that be 6 p.m. again? It is from 5.30 to 7. At the library. Yeah, so... We, that's one of the things. If, if you can make it, you don't have to stay the whole time from 5.30 to 7. If you can only make it for 30 minutes. Right. It's kind of informal. Drop in, see what they've got going on. If there's something that you want to relay, some ideas you've got to have. So it's not required that you stay that whole time. It's more of um, fit it to your schedule type deal. And we can promote that to the public as well, that this is that's, an open house. That's what I want to do is make sure we right. promote that to the public so they can come out. And and, and if they're you know, going home from work and they just want to stop by, if they're, absolutely. they wrapped up dinner and they still have time before you know the end of the evening, any time within that window, uh, they can come by. It doesn't have to be a whole two-hour commitment. And did the city send out a press release? Um, I know that it was posted on the um, city's Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, can we check and first see open house. if possibly a press release can go out prior? I think the other thing we want to make sure to broadcast to everybody is that there is an inter um, uh, inventory set up, an uh, actual survey. Uh, if you go to the Park and Rec website at the bottom of the page, it's uh, inquiring if anybody wants to give feedback in the master plan. They can click onto that, and it'll take them right to a digital survey. So hmm. we'd love to get that distributed as well. It might be something if you could send out an email format to everybody, and then you can forward that or copy that to as many people as you like. So that's another way I think we want to continue to get information. Uh, we haven't tallied that yet, but that'll be, historically, that's always been a very good source of feedback. A lot of people can't come to a public meeting or are a little shy to come to a public meeting, but, man, you get them on their computer and their own home space, and they'll be glad to tell you all kinds of things. Right? Yeah, but that doesn't even come close to people that like to try and keep up, and we're not getting it out there, and then it kind of blindsides them. Then they start asking questions. Right. Those are the ones, too, that are, we need to make sure we can get to. Yes, sir. Right. So that's kind of where we're at in the process. Any questions about that? Uh, so one of the things I really want to get to tonight, uh, is, and open this some more up as a discussion, is Matt's going to talk about kind of the, what we see as the rising opportunities and challenges and kind of what some of the things that have started to surface and this is very much a preliminary and a draft of that, but we want to get to that to get your feedback. This is a map of all the existing parks, and I think we showed this last time, but it has not only the parks on it, it has what we call a heat map of where most people live, work, play, do commerce. And you'll see that, you know, we have pretty good coverage, you know, on this side of 24, but when you get over to really kind of the, the southwest side of 24, that's where we lack some coverage on parks. So as we go further into the master plan, um, we'll continue to kind of highlight some opportunities there for parts of the city that may not have uh, current open space or parks. The other thing you'll see is, of course, the, the lake and all the core property and how that kind of wraps around the city. And that has become very important, I think, as far as uh, some of your recreational opportunities, and that's obvious to most people who live here, but one of the things we're seeing is there's an opportunity to promote that even more, even kind of brand it as part of who you are as a city, uh, promote it for people who are visiting, and make sure that people are encouraged, you know, to tap into that really unique resource that you have as far as the lake and some of the natural areas that surround it. 
<coughs> right here I've got uh, what we call the guiding principles. And this is something that came out of, you know, really a discussion with um, not only the input we've received from you all, the steering committee, but the park and rec staff, any of the public feedback we've gotten. These are the principles we think that are going to shape out the rest of the plan. So I'm going to go through them briefly. But one of the things I want to do is if you hear something that you're thinking, oh, that's good, but we need to adjust it or that, you know, we <coughs> missed something. We missed something really important. This is a good time to tap into that. So guiding principle one is to provide, maintain, and enhance recreational opportunities. And the whole idea is with a balance. With a balance of both passive uh, activities as well as active activities. So things that you have going on, say at Veterans Memorial Park, some of the active uh, <coughs> leagues that you have, that's important. But you also have to have things like the greenways, things like um, just opportunities for human open space and playgrounds and picnics and shelters and that kind of thing. So good balance. <coughs> Guiding principle number two is that really the idea is to provide <coughs> lifelong learning and play for everyone. So you want parks and recreation to be something that people think about no matter what age or what category <coughs> uh, social demographic they come back they come from. So as we look at making sure that we're planning for facilities in the future, you know, the youth leagues are great, but maybe there's a need for more adult leagues. Um, the Greenway is a great example of something that uh, really provides opportunities for just a whole cross range of ages and uh, social backgrounds. So that's principle number two is that, you know, there's a lifelong learning and play opportunity for all your residents. Number three is that we, ma we maintain not only an organizational structure and the staff and the equipment that you have now, but you have ongoing uh, operations and maintenance costs, and those have to be sustained going into the future. It's easy to get excited about a new project coming in or a new facility coming in, but if you don't have the budget to maintain and operate it, well, then you really get into challenges because you start to lose that quality of whatever it is you're trying to provide. So ongoing, sustainable operating uh, costs and maintenance costs is guiding principle number three. Number four is partnerships. Uh, and I'm going to use for an example any kind of youth leagues that you have going on, any time. Well, the old timers event is a great example of that. That's not something parks and recreation could operate on its own but it's something that the whole city gets behind and you form a partnership. There's really, that's, that's a very important guiding principle for any city or any uh, town that we deal with now because they realize, you know, David's not going to get a budget <coughs> just by himself or the facilities just by himself to do everything that the city needs. You've got to have partners to join in with that. Uh, guiding principle number five is really, as I said, making that outdoor experience and that natural environment something that you highlight those unique places you have in your city and to make sure you promote it and make it part of a branding of who you are and something that will draw people in, not only residents to live and move here, uh, but the existing, there might be some residents that aren't even aware of, like, I'm amazed at some of the facilities you have um, you know, out of Pool Knob and some of those other places that are really uh, unique. And then number six is to, you know, just the idea that you're going to encourage a healthy lifestyle uh, for, there again, all residents, any age group, any demographic. Um, we all know that, um, you know, this screen and this, you know, this thing, these devices we carry has become such a prominent part of everybody's life. Uh, parks and recreation are that chance to break out of the mold and get a little bit more house activity. So any way you can interface that with somebody at uh, uh, any stage of life is a good thing. So, we, yes, sir. Excuse me just a second. Can Please we, do. Uh, Laura just got over that crud. She's got the remnants of a bad cough. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I know what it was. You got over the bad cough. Well, we're glad you're, you're well enough to be here tonight, yeah. so please don't. It's just a little warm in here. Yeah, no worries. If Bruce was here, he'd take care of that, <laughs> wouldn't he, Vice Mayor? Yes, he's, he certainly would. So just a 
not to, I don't know where, when we can ask and stuff, but I just don't want to forget to ask this. Yes, sir. Have you all talked with the, because last meeting when you we, we were talking about continuing the Greenway, and I'm not stepping on Greenway Committee, but I just want to know, uh, we had talked about continuing the Greenway from out there at the circle to the boat ramp. Right. Have you all talked with TWRA yet? We have not talked to them yet. I think we've targeted that as certainly a dialogue that has to happen. We've been getting the background of what are, what is the city interested in. Okay. You know what? When we do talk to them, we want to make sure we're on the same page of having the discussion that lines up with what your goals are, what you've already <coughs> what discussions you've already had. So that will happen. Um, hasn't happened yet. I just, I, I just think that would be just way, way, way cool if that could ever get through. Mm -hmm. Right. We understand that, you know, what we've heard is that dialogue kind of started with a, with a wall, and now maybe that has softened maybe to a picket fence that we can punch through. <laughs> yeah, using the analogy. But, you know, we, we will have that dialogue because I think it's an important part of what your options are. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just, okay. I was just curious I, about that. I personally did take my kayak out there in Hurricane Creek and tooled around in some of the backwaters and actually went up in the creek way. And I was amazed at the estuary back there, the number of birds that you have. Uh, it's really kind of cool. It's not something you see in every part of, of the lake because the boat traffic is really diminished on the other side of the marina. You have a lot of... Um, wetlands and marshes that kind of bleed into mm -hmm. the edge of the lake. Um, so that may even be something that you can promote that's unique to uh, Laverne, is that you have that Hurricane Creek experience. So um, any questions? I know I covered a lot of things on the guiding principles. As I was talking through all that, uh, were there any of those that you are concerned about or feel that you know, we've captured most of it or we need to add to or delete from any of that. And there will be chances to look at that on a piece of paper in front of you, you know, and kind of mark it with a pen. But just as initial feeling and feedback, what do you all think? Well, I like it. I like the guiding principles that you have there. Um, I would... It would take me some time to think of other ideas sure. if there is any, but it that's seems good. like a very good place to start from. Yeah, that's good. As, what we want to make sure is that it's a good place to start from. If there's anything that jumped out at you, <coughs> you know, but you will have a chance to di just digest that more. So as long as there's nothing that stands out and you're like, oh, no, that's, that's a little different than what, you know, what, where we want to go, uh, then I think we're in good shape. Yeah, and I think as long as as long as there's a vision of us moving forward somewhere where we don't get stagnant, and because I'm kind of impatient, so I see all of these ideas and I want them to happen now. Now, you know, yeah, let's grab the boat ramp, let's get that property out there, see what we can do. But right. it's a slow process, so we know everything's going to take time. But we don't want to get to the point where we're not trying to accomplish anything, you know. So we want to get a plan in place and see what we can, what is going to be easily accomplished now and then start moving towards in the future, you know, because there's some stuff that you guys are probably going to present that realistically we could probably implement within a year, a year and a half, you know, mm -hmm. um, would take some work from the parks department to get those going. But once they start going, then they're self-sustaining. So we want to have that plan and, and move forward and just not, throw something out there and say, yeah, 15 years from now, we'd love to have the boat ramp, you know, because in, in my vision, that's something that I want to see within a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I know that's probably not realistic, but I think, I think if we sit back on our hands, then we're never going to get anything accomplished. Right. Part of the master plan idea is that you, you aim high and you shoot out over, you know, 15, 20 years, but then we're going to have some implementation steps that say, hey, these are the things to really target uh, in the shorter framework. And it gives you the tools to say, here's where we're going to focus. So you're exactly right. You're, there's going to be some things you want to focus on. 
If you don't chart it out in a vision, you know, then it's, if you don't lay down the tracks, nothing's going to move. Just like you said, we're laying down tracks to start things moving. I guess, uh, I guess I'm like David, except he said in two years is not realistic. I was thinking more like I'd like to have it in the next year, and that's not realistic. So two years to me well, is pretty is ample time, stuff. I think, with an aggressive board and city. And yeah. There's some stuff that we can go over that we can implement that would be realistically done. Now, as far as getting the, the right of way to the, through TWRA or the core, I don't know how realistic that how I don't know how quick something like that could happen. I would love to see that done because I think that's a resource we haven't tapped into that that gets utilized a lot. So if we could if we could take that over and maintain that, um, it's only going to be a benefit for us. So uh, you know I think we're all on a, in agreement that we'd like to see stuff like that start to happen. Unfortunately, dealing with any state agency, I've never seen them move real fast. No. That's why I asked you your last time you were here how good your uh, my persuasion your is. well or, or at least your uh, friendship for lack of better words right, with right. them. Well, but David seems to think the city's got a good rapport with them. Yes. So yes, yeah. and a lot of times the, you know I'm sorry. Go ahead, Miss okay. Kim. I was going to say it's um, what helps is that they see this in your plan and they know you're serious about it. That shows them you've got, you know, some back and forth. Now, would there be like, say, little uh, tables and for like, not camping, but I mean, uh, picnic. picnic tables? <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's a very plausible type of facility to put out there. I mean, you you want people to be active, but you want them to stop and enjoy and relax right. and have an opportunity to Re My, my uh, grandson is the one that asked me that question. Yeah? Because yeah. they walk from, they walk the Greenway all the way down to Hurricane Creek. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the boat ramp. Mm -hmm. And he said, would there be any picnic tables or mm -hmm. where people could sit down and rest a while? Of course, I know your, uh, I think your geese out there are pretty aggressive right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. yeah. You might have to think about that. But there's ways to manage that as well. Okay, well, as I said, I really want to get into this. So, swap boards. <coughs> so this is a draft of our opportunities and challenges that we've had from feedback so far. And one of the big ones we've kind of already touched on, it would be the Greenway. It's great opportunities for recreation and interaction with nature and social connections. And there's opportunities with Percy Cruz being so close and also connect with some of the surrounding communities. And another one of those that David was talking about, some of those low hanging fruits would be at the skate park where here it gets a lot of use. That'd just be a real low hanging fruit to expand upon that. Another thing we heard was a community center and senior center, and that's a place that provides opportunities for active recreation, could be educational programs, social interaction, and just an inclusive space to help promote personal health and wellness. And I'll, I'll pause on this one a little bit. Um, <coughs> you know, it's always that big, and we were talking about the easy ones, the uh, lower cost ones, and of course the community center is something that's pretty expensive. Big. Right. But I will say this, uh, especially if you put it in the context of a community park, and you're looking for something, say, like I said, on the west side or 24, um, a lot of times it is the most productive as far as having a full range of programs. You know, you think about the indoor activities that, that can occur all year round. You think about the social space that it creates um, and then all the active recreation that tends to form around the outside. A lot of times those are something you might have to plan for, you know, five, ten years down the road. But if you don't have it targeted and you don't realize the value, then it always kind of gets pushed aside. So this is an expensive item, but we see it as a pretty valuable one for the community. Are there, uh, and Deborah would probably know more than anybody, but do they do grants for these kind of things? Yeah, absolutely. Not, uh, they do uh, land acquisition grants, um, you get building grants, and you can get grants uh, for your programs also. 
So uh, there's different funds available. So there, uh, lo there's lots of opportunities. But like they said, you have to have a vision and you have to start somewhere. So, and I totally agree. I, I think that's one that we keep putting off. We keep putting off, but it's a very important one. So it's a very important one. And I also think that um, with those programs, uh, you would generate income and uh, uh, they're just so I see a lot of opportunities with it and benefits for the community. Okay, sorry to interrupt your phone, no, man. No worries, no worries. Uh, another thing we've also heard a lot about is expanding on some of the programs and leagues. I know one thing we heard is youth soccer, maybe adult softball as well. Uh, another thing is partners and volunteers. It's a real strong component of existing park and recreation systems. Good thing, always take advantage of those. It's always a good thing to do. And outdoor adventure, again, with Percy Priest being so close and Hurricane Creek, it's a huge asset, and just keep using that as much as you can. And I'm going to say also with outdoor adventure comes outdoor education. There's environmental side of it, uh, educational side of it that you can in, in employ. I know the state has like a natural outdoors um, kind of youth program, like where you can go and you can uh, get certain certificates for completing certain things. You know, a lot of times we talk about partnerships. They're always looking for places where they can encourage people to embrace that type of thing. So that that's one example where you could team with the state and say, hey, we can have these places where if they go, you know, our program will help them complete the certificate. Uh, I was going to ask you, the last time you all had talked about you had been to uh, <clears throat> Shelbyville, I think it was, or, or Lewisburg or somewhere, you all had done their stuff. Uh, how, was, how was their ideas compared to Laverne's in the beginning, and you guys apparently conquered all those? By making their systems work, was there is there was there anything that they did in particular that maybe us as a city could? Because you know I'm like David, man. I'm excited about this for the kids, for the community. But uh, I want to do the strong points. Community centers are great. I think that's a that's a crawl before you walk type deal, but. You're talking about the lake and stuff, and I'm trying to figure out how can we use the lake if we can't get through this TWRA thing. Well, even even the idea that your greenway could link to it, you know, is, is one thing. And to answer your question, I mean, what I've seen is you built, you, you cast a vision that you know everybody's had some input on to begin with. And that way they feel like, okay, yeah, I remember us talking about that. And then you have to keep beating that drum. And you kind of have to keep, if you ever probably knows, applying for those grants. You may not get that grant the first year. But a lot of times they'll say, well, you come back again. And so you figure out what are those, some of them are easy. You know, I'm going to say something like the dog park or expanding the skate park. Those are pretty easily done things, you know, with existing local parks and rec grants and uh, something like the community center, uh, you just keep uh, telling that story over and over again. You get a benefactor excited about it. Um, I'm going to think of like, um, well, you know, for example, Murfreesboro, the, the Miracle Field, I remember they were talking about that eight to ten years before it happened. But they kept you know, the Parks and Rec Department kept highlighting that to the city council every chance they had. They kept, and then eventually you got some benefactors that say, well, we can see the city's behind it. We're going to get involved in it. And then the whole public is saying, hey, this is something that's important to happen. So you really have to work three, all three of those, you know, parts of the communication and the discussion, which is the general public, has to know about it, be excited about it. Your uh, administration and your community leaders have to be continually saying, you know, this is something that has to happen. And then you got to get your private sector kind of involved. Um, 
or even landowners. You know, we had down in the city of Columbia, we had landowners that saw the vision for the master plan and they, they said, hey, you know what, I've got 20 acres that I've always wanted to put in a green belt, why not put it into a park? So you got to keep telling that same story with all three of those groups. And you got to tell it over and over again. You got to get a grant for this piece and you get a grant for that piece. Um, that's the only way I know it's that elephant story. You bite it off in size pieces and you just keep, but you don't put your fork down. You keep going at it. Did that answer your question? Oh, yeah. And, and I guess we, uh, we don't even have a grant writer, do we? We don't have one yet. I think that position's still open. Um, Kathy has been doing some research on that. So um, we're keeping her busy. She's seeing what's out there and what we can apply for and what we think we can apply for. And then if we find something, how we move forward with that. I think this, the, this one story you left out of what you just told us was, I think somewhere in there, there's got to be an aggressive grant writer Right, you'll have to keep, and you won't get grants for everything. No, but you uh, gotta. But, you know, I'm sure you've seen, like with your Greenway, that's a that's a classic case where grants can make a huge difference. And, you know, continuing that phase, uh, when TDOT sees you invested so many miles and you want to go to the next phase, you've already got some leverage because they know you're serious and you're going to follow through. Sorry, Matt. No, no, no worries. <coughs> now we're going to talk, touch on some of the challenges we're starting here. One of those is connections to park facilities. Now it'll take a lot of planning, and it'll only get worse as traffic continues to grow and make it more important to have those connections. And also some of the aging and outdated facilities. I know we've heard some of the surfaces out the playgrounds. I know those are getting fixed now. Just some of the things like that. There's, and that's, that's, that's really everywhere, too. And a lot of the... The local neighborhoods facilities those are in high demand and we're starting to see that maybe the south side of town, the other side of 24 might be a little underserved in that capacity. And also another common thing is just increased need for operation and maintenance. Just keep up with the facilities we've got right now. That thing and is- I'll, I'll make a note on that. One thing I recommend, anytime the city approves a capital expenditure for a facility or a program, they also need to consider the operating and maintenance. You know, it happens right then and there with that capital expenditure. So David's not left getting kind of hamstring and spread out. Yeah, so that that, anytime you're looking at something expanding it from a facility or program standpoint, think about how you want to expand your operating and maintenance. But now I'm not saying it has to be proportional because you know, it's not like you need a new lawnmower for every park. But don't let that slip through the cracks every time to start something new. And also, increased revenue will be needed to support some of the parking facility program as they expand, what Kevin was just touching on. And also, promoting parks and recreation as a part of a bigger proactive economic driver in the city, promote bringing more tourism and more activity to the city. And I would say not only tourism, but the whole quality of life. Sure. You know, when you're promoting your city and who you are and the opportunities that people have when they move here and they work. You know, we always talk about how do we get our kids to stay, right? Well, this is a big part of it. For a lot of the millennials, that's, you know, and the outdoor recreation is huge. And they might have to move to another city for a little while and realize that they lost Percy Priest Lake. But, you know, if you're promoting it enough, they may come back. Questions about kind of where we're heading with those opportunities and channels. Am I the only one asking questions? <laughs> I, think, I think they've done a phenomenal I'm job. I'm excited. So you, yeah. You've covered a lot of stuff that we normally would have asked. So you've done sure. a great job. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, you've been out doing your uh, drive arounds drones or whatever yeah, a, did you do a drone or no, anything no, we're boots on the ground people. okay we, boots on the ground then <laughs> what uh, have you got any 
any idea if it were to happen, if we could pull it off, where you would put a soccer park? Uh, well, we talked about some of that. Um, you know, there's there is a thought uh, of even right here. You know, we've got some ball fields that maybe if we put ball field improvements elsewhere, right in Centennial Park, you might have a uh, possibility of soccer. Um, Help me out, David. I know we talked about that the other night, too. Yeah, and I think soccer is one of the things that we could readily do pretty quickly. It's just getting the personnel in place and how we want to approach it. If the city wants to take that on and try to run the league, we just hired an events coordinator, which a lot of you guys know. Um, we're going to keep him busy because we want to take the events we have and make those the best we can. So I don't really want to branch out and throw a whole bunch of other stuff at him where he's not focusing on making those the best. So somewhere down the line, we'd like to see that events and athletic coordinator maybe maybe split back <coughs> up and bring somebody else on board that could solely focus on the outside leagues, be the li liaison between them and the city. And if we say we go for a soccer league, is if we get the right person in place, can they spearhead the league or are we still going to have to partner with somebody else? I, I think we can do that relatively quick. Um, I think, you know, we have that football field that sits vacant up there six months out of the year. Soccer's generally played in the spring. So I think we can utilize what we have now until we figure out if we're going to be able to expand in the future and have a soccer complex. It doesn't have to be like Siegel soccer complex, you know, we could have we could have a couple of fields and I think be fine. Those little kids, you could probably put three three of those on one football field. Yeah, actually with the youth leagues, I mean you could probably even some of the younger ones probably even fit like four or five and then as you're going up as long as you're not playing a high level collegiate or high school, you know, uh, there's ways to squeeze it in like David said, the soccer field. Bicentennial Park may have some room. We'll keep looking, but um, I know one of the things that uh, rep, well, kind of sprung out of our evaluations, there's also some places we thought you could probably fit uh, a disc golf course, like a nine-hole disc golf course in some of your facilities might be an option. I just know that soccer's really, really growing. Kids yeah. love it. What about that other thing you all talked about? I can't remember Pickle the name. Pickleball. Pickleball. Well, so one of the things you could do, there's been talk about resurfacing the courts, and pickleball can actually be facilitated on the same surface and dimensions that your tennis court is. So you could take one, you know, if there's two courts out there, if I'm not mistaken, you could take one, resurface that, continue it for tennis, and then restripe the other one for pickleball and just kind of see how much use it gets. Um, pretty easy to convert back to tennis if you need to. Mm -hmm. In some places they even do, like uh, I've seen it striped indoors in the gymnasium or they'll tape out your pickleball court in, inside in the gymnasium. So there's a couple <coughs> places where you could try it and see how much interest it has without really investing a whole lot into creating its own type of facility. You know, you talked about some things a while ago, and I, I probably shouldn't say this being we're being recorded, but I don't see anybody in this town that owns the property to donate us any property because they're all, I shouldn't say that, so they're all just up. greedy. <laughs> say you what know, you want. They're going to sell it. They want to sell it and make big money, and they don't want to, donate to the city like Smyrna has people that does that, Murfreesboro, Siegel, all those communities like that have people. But Well, part of it is you never know. I mean, there again, if you create a strong enough vision and get enough excitement, sometimes people can surprise you. Historically, uh, we've had a lot of people in Laverne um, do for our community. I mean, the property that the library sits on is a prime example. Yeah. There's there's several people that have donated money and land from their own pockets um, to facilitate the growth of Laverne. And I think, you know, it is just a matter of asking the right people, sharing the vision, um, generating the excitement, and staying with it. And a lot of people just want to leave a legacy um, right. for their family and for their community that they, they lived in. So... Um, you know, there's opportunity there, too, with, with people that own property that, that um, 
you know, they may will it to us on their demise as well. Well, good. Maybe they'll see this and prove me wrong. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I had one thing, too. Yes, um, soccer fields can be repurposed for other sports as well. And the fastest growing girls sport in the United States is lacrosse. It's huge. If you have a little girl that's eight or nine years old and you want her to get an athletic scholarship one day, you ought to be steering her to lacrosse. And it's growing. Um, you know, so things like that. I've heard buzz around town. People say, man, I wish there was somewhere my daughter could learn to play lacrosse. We got to go all the way to West Nashville or whatever. Right. So, you know, something like that could in five years be, you know, something that we'd want to look at as well. Absolutely. Actually, if you look at kind of regional trends, things that are growing, even national trends, uh, lacrosse has definitely come from what used to be a northern, midwestern. Right. It's, it's definitely become popular even in the south. Um, pickleball was the other one. You will see just, I think you're going to find in the next five to ten years, that's going to start bursting at the seams. Even things like ultimate frisbee and, um, you know, rugby so one of the best things you can do, if you get a piece of ground and you know you don't have the money to build a community center today, but you can create that flex type of field space, that's a pretty easy, um, immediate opportunity that you have to promote some programs, even if it's not like, well, we can't invest $20 million into a community center, but we can level the ground and create a flex space and start, you know, soccer, lacrosse, um, you know, Flag more areas for the football practice, you know, rugby, those are all things that are used to be seen as kind of peripheral sports that have started to actually become pretty popular. Right. So as much flex space as you get, you know, that's a good thing. And it also lets you try to, you know, try the, the market, if I put it that way, the market, the interest level for people and you get a club that's invested into it. Down in, in Columbia, we had we were talking about the disc golf. We had uh, the Mule Town, what were they called? Mule Town, uh, Mule Town Disc Disc Club, I think is what it was. Mule Towners, but they said, hey, if you give us a space, we will purchase the holes. You know, they're basically the baskets. Uh, we will maintain all the grounds that you know at the tees and the baskets. Uh, we'll set up the leagues ourselves. You won't need to provide staff. Um, so those are the kind of things, a lot of times, if you give them some space, they can do a lot with it. And it's things that we wouldn't normally think of because we don't think of disc golf as being something that a lot of people are playing, but it's, it's, it is becoming pretty popular. Yeah, Smyrna's got one. I've been over there and played before. It's, it's pretty right. unique. Right, Sharp Springs, yeah. Yeah, Sharp Springs. Just avoid the poison ivy. That hole number nine. I'm just telling I you. ain't allergic to it, so I don't <laughs> worry about it. I think the key to that is making sure that we promote it. Because like Leslie said, people are talking about young girls lacrosse. If they had a space for it and they were aware of it, who knows who's going to come out of the woodwork and like, oh, yeah, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I'm going to want to start this league for a while. That's where the partnerships are going to come up from. Right. But we have to get the information out there, and I don't think – Historically, this has been a great suit because, like, we compare a lot to, you know, Smyrna and Murfreesboro. Most of their parks are right there off of a busy street, right? Mm -hmm. There's not really a whole lot of promotion needed there. You see the giant sign that says, welcome, it's a park. We don't really have a lot of that opportunity here. You have to go off the beaten path mm -hmm. to be able to find any of our parks. So that promotion, I think, is going to be a critical element to getting that buy-in, especially from the community. I like the idea of... Uh, Ashley. Don't forgot your name. Leslie. <laughs> Leslie. She just started. First time. <laughs> uh, about same field, multiple uses. Right. And as David said, spring for soccer, using the football field. Football for football, yeah. Those are, I guess. Good way to start. Just switch the goals out and re-chalk and you're done. Now, it makes more work for your maintenance crew. they got to continually, but that's why the field's there, right? So the right budget, and he can, he can get you soccer. He needs more help. Mm -hmm. So any, any more thoughts on those? There again, we'll put this, you know, paper format in front of you where you can really digest it and, 
what we really wanted to do tonight is make sure we weren't going off track in anything or politically stepping into something we didn't know about or, you know, um, saying something that had already been said but people are, you know, had tried it and didn't like it or something like that. I had one other question, and forgive me if this has already been addressed in a previous meeting. Again, it's my, my first one. Um, Twelve years ago, my husband and I moved up here from Gainesville, Florida. Go Gators. Um, but Gainesville uh, is a that college can be town. That out of the tape, I think, yeah. right? Please. I can't help it. Um, but at any rate, uh, I was very impressed with the way the city of Gainesville ran community education courses. They had volunteer instructors from the community who were passionate about whatever topic, whether it's knitting or kayaking or whatever, and would volunteer for two months, three months to teach a course and community members would pay 30 or 40 bucks plus materials and come learn one night a week or whatever. And it was a lot of fun. And you know, you learned a lot. You, there was photography, there was all kinds of things. There was partnerships, there was a local community college besides the University of Florida. Um, so I was wondering if anything like that has been considered, of course, having a, a community center is um, a good catalyst for that, but even absent that, yeah. Has there been any discussion of, of things like that that don't, wouldn't necessarily require a capital expenditure or anything like that to, uh, to explore? We have some programs available at the library already in place, um, similar to what you're talking about, and then the Senior Center also offers seniors um, a chance to do that. But um, I like where you're going with that. I think I do too. a way that we can expand on that. Definitely. Murfreesboro, I mean, if you want to look closer to home, they. Do, I mean, obviously they're bigger and they've got different resource pool but um, I'm amazed at what kind of programs people will uh, support and volunteer for. And that kind of gets that partnership thing really you know you know there's a good dialogue going and people know at least they can present the idea right you know you can go pretty far with it there's always a bunch of people on uh, social media talking about my child doesn't do this why can't we get this but I think it all stems down or a big part of it stems down to like Leslie was saying there's got to be some volunteers that want to people like to sit back and and talk it or criticize it but yet they don't <coughs> want to put their foot in a circle and and go up there and the same people just keep doing it then their plates right. plate like Melissa over there she with baseball her I mean her plate's full you know no pun intended right Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I forget, she's a Gator fan, I think it is. Yeah. Sure. Good woman. Ooh, I see so. And I think a lot of that where a bunch of those programs could be run out of a community center. Right now, we're, we're struggling to find the space. Even if we tried to implement a program like that, our, our question is where would we put that? Where... You know, we can only do so much at the library, right. and she's very accommodating, but if we were to do an after-school program or offer something like that to the public, where, where would we put it? So, and I think, you know, if, if we've got that vision of a community center, that solves a bunch of our issues there because we could run a basketball league out of there. Um, we could do after-school programs. You know, that opens up a whole different animal that we don't have the ability to tackle right now. David, where I think we have opportunity is to collaborate. I'm a, a big, um, we need to be collaborating with our schools. We need to be, there's a lot of opportunities. Um, Montlow, and, and as far as programs, I have already spoken with somebody, and I'd rather not disclose who that is. Uh, I don't think I spoke with you pr uh, pr about this, Steve. It's, uh, uh, but there is a lot of opportunities that would bring programs into our communities when we need the space. So I think we need to further collaborate within the community, uh, our business partners. We've got the largest industrial in Rutherford County. We have so many opportunities here to partner with businesses. Um, we have lots of, uh, I think it's very important that we partner with our schools and collaborate because like you, you said from the get-go, and I'm a visionary, that we sit down and we discuss, not just with us, but we need to bring other people in to further our opportunities for parks and recreation in the city. Yeah, and we've kind of we've kind of discussed amongst ourselves in, in the department where kind of like some of the after school programs or what can we offer in the evenings for kids to do and kind of rotate it up. Um, 
we've got some ideas. You know, I know Melissa took off with some ideas probably a month or so ago. We've got some ideas finding the space. We've kind of got something that we think may work, but we don't want to – somebody else would have to relinqu relinquish the space in the city. So we don't want to throw a whole bunch of stuff out there when we've just talked about it amongst ourselves and it may not even be doable yet. But – <clears throat> we've kind of got those ideas too where we want to go and we think we've got a good idea but approaching somebody else with it it may not be a good idea to them or it, might even become a better idea. Or it may become a better idea right well we just bought that land out by the circle that'd be a good place just saying so we got one more exercise we want to do tonight but anything more on opportunities and challenges and oh before we move on to that let me just yes. say we do have you know, we're renovating the park, the playground. So there, there may be some funds there that are left that were allocated to that project that we're not going to use all of those. So we are in the process of trying to get some quotes to redo the tennis courts. So we may be able to work some of that into that balance. We'd have to come back before the board and let them know what we're doing to approve that since that was a capital expenditure. But there may be some of those funds left that will cover, if not all of that, maybe – at least part of it. So maybe we can get two things done, you know, relatively quickly. The pickleball, maybe we can get that resurfaced and start moving forward with that. Um, how much of that? Uh, how much of that money do you have to hold back though to how, to go back in six months or eight months and put more mulch and? Oh, we that would just would work that into our annual. We'll work budget. it in. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. All right. And, and we should be good if 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 they just do that this year. Uh, I wouldn't think we would have to. We wouldn't. We would never have to put the amount in there that they're initially putting in there. We would just basically be topping it off. But we can work that into our annual budget because we've got other playgrounds that we need to do that with also anyway. Okay. Anything more on what we talked about before we go to the next fun thing we're going to do? All right. So. Since it's parks and recreation, we got to have some at least a little bit of fun, right? Um, and some of you have gone through this exercise already, but since we have a captive, captive audience, what we're going to do is we are going to get you to put stickers <laughs> on these activities. And take your time to this. As those, uh, as those uh, 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 things that Kathy took uh, surveys that they put out months and months and months ago, do you guys get a look at that? And if you did, did they help you with anything? The surveys that were already put out. Yeah, the parks and recreation. Park and Rex. Right. Did those the questions and what we'd like to do is take what you have and at least integrate like the statistics that you had into our survey. So there's going to be a cross, you know, pollinization between what you provided. We added some more questions and we'll we'll put those two that database together. It would be good if we have the summary of that. I think you gave us that already, did you not? At, at one point yeah. we did, yes. And we had the answers to it. Yes. Yeah. So we'll have to manually punch those into our survey at some point. So what you have in front of you is a bunch of fun and playful and healthy and you know passive and active activities. And you also have three different colors and three different dots of each color um, that we want you to put on these sheets. So after you looked at them and you said, okay, and here's the idea because it's it's easy to say you want everything, right? Right. What this makes you do is start to think a little bit about what would be the one thing either that, I, that we have that we want to expand and do more of, or maybe there's something we don't have and we really need it. And that's the one thing I'd like to see happen on that page. And you put the blue sticker on that item. Am I getting colors right? Green. 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 Sorry. Green sticker on that item. So the first part is green. And then you get to make a second choice on that same page, which is the second thing I'd want to happen is, 
you know, blue, and then the third thing I want to happen is yellow. What that does is it starts to prioritize where we're going to focus the most attention. Now, that's not to say that anything on there is a bad idea or something you shouldn't have or you don't want to have. This kind of forces you to what I call a funnel, where you got to kind of narrow in. Well, that's tough, eh? Yeah? Huh? If there's, you know, if we only have so much money, you know, these are the things I'd really like to see happen. So... I and guess thinking about it, you got to stay realistic too to what's. And if there's something on, on there that's not making sense to you or doesn't uh, explain itself, we're happy to help with that. Yes, sir. What if we already filled this out? Fill it out again. Then you got two. That's all right. We need we need as much as we can get. That confuse you. It won't confuse us. We can have a way of processing that. And it keeps the people that showed up the other night give you a little. More. So this will basically be our own personal choice, not a, Correct. A, so we can integrate in a vision. Exactly. All right. So. So this is your own personal choice. Mm -hmm. can we Obviously, you can weigh different things as you make that choice. If you know people have been telling you, hey, you know, you really got to have more lacrosse, you know, then that can help your decision. But this is very much we want your direct feedback. And we want to be able to measure that and integrate it into our research. Like this. And I do have one question. When you yes. have music um, and movies in the park, are you thinking along like an amphitheater stage setting to build on? Yes. I know that we already exist, have existing music and movies Ooh, in the, the park. Isn't there an amphitheater that's separate uh, under those page? Oh, yeah. I'd like to see that. Maybe not. No, there so I'll tell you what I suggest. <clears throat> if you want to mark that one, get more put in a note stuff. under it that says, you know, stage in amphitheater. Outdoor amphitheater venue or something. Mm -hmm. okay. Or outdoor staging. And then, yeah, certainly feel free to write. There's okay. even a category that's like another that we didn't think of. And the more notes we get, the more the direct, specific feedback we get. Any idea how many people have responded to the survey yet? Pickleball. I just can't. It was, only, it was only getting pulled every quarter, I thought. Right. Is that right? Yeah, I believe we did it in November one. So we'll have to wait. Um, we'll have to wait we'll go ahead and pull it for you. We pull it manually. We just weren't presenting it except for. Gotcha. Gotcha. So we can go ahead and pull it. Yeah, just to see what we got so far. It's not hard to do. As parks and recreation, your agenda and stuff that your department wants to handle, do y'all have like a, a regular sort of idea? That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Yeah, that's a. Uh, everything it here. It is really hard to kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah. and, and I've been to so many different places where all of these were present in right. one place or another, and how <laughs> awesome would it be to have it all? It's hard to think about it. Like you said, you want personal thoughts, but trying to keep it in huh? just personal, you want it for the community, is hard. Because you're representing. Yeah. Everybody, like my granddaughter <laughs> is seven. And um, so 
she wants to play soccer. Mm -hmm. We don't have Fun. soccer here, here, mm -hmm. and uh, she's actually going to be playing. Put a green sticker on it, sweetie. For the <laughs> Put a green <laughs> sticker on it. I, I did. Okay. <laughs> you, know, you, you think about that. So it's not just what I want, but those closest to me. And, yeah. You know, and, and there's a lot of these things that, even though I've seen them, I've never participated. But I might if we had them, like the Frisbee. And mm. I still have no idea what this pickleball thing is. <laughs> <laughs> think about the effort to combine... You know, I'm going to take the last blue one since you took the last minutes. green one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lighter paddle. I think that's it's a lighter fine. ball. Smaller uh, it's this, a smaller this for sport. older people like you. <laughs> and it's, uh, but it's, so it is, it's mm -hmm. easier, it's easier on you know, tennis. Mm -hmm. tennis yeah, it's rough on my shoulder. shoulder. Yeah. So it's easier on, because the ball is not so heavy. Okay. And the, and the, and the racket's not so heavy. <laughs> and you're in tighter quarters. But it's not as scary as like racket. No, but you get a little bit, you know, you can get pretty, I mean, I've seen a pretty intense competition if you can play it. But it's because it's not a quarter, you can get some speed going and stuff. But it's not like, you know, like I said, it's not the intensity of tennis where you get your joints stressed out or you have to reach or go so far. What did. Uh what did you all think about Brookside Park? I'm sorry, which park? Brookside. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's an example of the developer has worked with you a little bit, at least, to provide that space. I think there's opportunities to ask for more of that. That's my first thought on it is, you know, why not ask other people to do kind of that same thing? Because it's going to add value to their community and the homes and the sale uh, of that property, um, I think that's a really good one. Just it's a lo it's obviously going to be a local neighborhood park. It doesn't have the scale to you know be where to park. a large, but it's the kind of place. If you had a shelter and you had some picnic tables, you're connecting to the greenway. You know that little stretch of walkable piece. Um, you know, I think you could even do something. Others talk about stormwater. Um, Rain garden parks being something that you can demonstrate. Because I think there's going to be a detention area in there, if I'm not mistaken. The At Brookside? Yeah. Um, there, there's, yeah, they'll have to build a retention pond there somewhere to hold some of that, because most of it's in a flood zone anyway. So, so that may be an opportunity for us to you get You could do get something some with, you know, uh, environmental education there. You know, do, it out, do some signage, do some, you know, as well as your, your passive use, like picnic and in a shelter and a yeah, playground. Be, well, yeah, there again, you know, it would have to be a community thing because you couldn't, there's nowhere for anybody to park or go over there. On Brookside? I yeah, I think the plans were to maybe put a parking area on that backside where the actual home development is. If they, if they give some of that land over to, uh, I think at one time, maybe the developer <clears throat> was talking about building a shelter back there and maybe turning some of it over to the city we're looking at putting maybe. Oh, is that on Moore's Way or whatever that is that cuts back I don't here? know what the back side of that is because that subdivision, you know, they're all pretty new homes back there. Um, you could, uh, that's a nice little neighborhood park that could really serve. And you could still have, like, some parking areas where people could drive to it as well. But it's not going to serve a huge, you know, area. I recall Need right they, that was looked at purchasing the land and I don't know David uh, if you remember that quite some time ago and Laura you might remember that also and if I remember right didn't the city look at that and say that the cost was yeah, well is actual, that what it was yeah I think it was about nine or ten years ago and what I think how it really started was the developer we thought we were going to get a deal on it but when it came time to make a deal the price inflated well just for the parking you mean no, no, for that, where that walking trail dead ends now, before yeah. all that development was back there, that was just open land. So at one time, we were in the in process of trying to purchase that mm -hmm. and put a ball complex back there. That was the original plan, as far as I'm aware, but that fell through, you know. As the years went on, mm -hmm. I, I think the developer decided that he could do something with it and make a little more money out of it. So they started building homes back then. Mm -hmm. 
that. Yeah, we were thinking, I think, too, at one point of uh, expanding the Greenway on over into mm -hmm. Metro's side. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the inflation of the, the price kind of put a damper on that for us. But it, it would have been nice. I don't remember that. Mm -hmm. That's when um, Tom Broker yeah, Tom. Mm -hmm. was on the... Um, he was chair then. Mm -hmm. We, we did look into that. It would, it would be really nice if we could. That's ultimately the goal is to continue the greenways mm -hmm. on. So hopefully at some point we'll, we'll get there. All right. I think everybody's... No, I see Miss Mary still <laughs> got a... <laughs> well, we definitely thank each and every one of you for your feedback tonight, for your thoughts, so uh, continued dialogue. And uh, it's great to do this exercise because I know we could we could go ahead and get this integrated into our results right away. So appreciate that. Well, I look forward to everybody getting this out to their friends and families and neighbors and in the communities. Hopefully, come library time on March the 10th, uh, have a lot of interest. Right. You know. At our next meeting with them, right? at the library March 10th. Yeah, we'll have a steering committee meeting by the 17th of February. So we'll have one more meeting that we can start February 17th? Yes, sir. And that'll be a chance to get more into the recommendations before we get them. So you're going to come back here to our next park and rec meeting? Yes, sir. That's the plan. As long as that meets with your schedule, and uh, yeah, that's what we had. That's what we had in our schedule. We just need to get busy talking about uh, other things. Is that going to be another collaborative meeting, or do we need to another collaborative? Yeah. So, David, do you mind, or one of you, do you mind re um, requesting that with? the city administrator to make sure that we're properly advertised for that. Yeah, because here it's at 7, so just change that to be here at 6. <clears throat> so we get to look at your all's faces again next month. Yeah. They're pretty faces. We're blessed. Aren't we lucky? They're all pretty. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for these gentlemen? I just hope it gets done. Well, I think well, they're they're building the groundwork and the uh, helping us with the vision, but I think it's going to be up to us. It's going to be up to us, the uh, city, and hopefully some business people and other things. But well, I I think it was mentioned. I, I would agree. I, I I did live in Laverne for 16 years, and I was always amazed at the amount of industry that's come in and the opportunities that they've had because of the. Of the infrastructure and the table you've set for them, and I would have to believe that there are some, you know, industries that recognize, hey, we got people working here that need these amenities, <clears throat> and it's part of our role, you know, to be in the community and, and invest in the community. Invest in the community. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully Absolutely. that would be something that would start to spark some interest. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. you did so a great we'll come job. Come around and pick up your. I want to take mine home. Pick up your <laughs> chest. You really want to take it home? Well, yes. So I can put it in my stock and my boxes of everything else I got for the last. Take it home with you. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can give you more too. If you want us to take it, we'll take it. If you want to take, take it, it and home. do some good with it. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm? You no, I want to keep it and take it home. Oh, you? Actually, it's about a thought oh. in me. Um, Put it in my. Is this communicable box? digitally? Because yeah, no. we talk about you know the vision Started sessions like we had last week at the library, but that's from X time to Y time on specific days. Not everybody can make that for their life and work schedules. <clears throat> is there a way that we could present this digitally to the community to possibly tie it in with the survey? Just to kind of aggregate that prioritization from them like we're doing here with this meeting. 
Thousand. Is that a possibility? Just with like a, a quiz. Um, I've seen a bill with like, you know, you can choose your right. ranking based on these pictures. Right, right. And one, you know, each page, you know, you choose your favorite three here, one, two, three, and then the next page, next page, and then collect that data the city to help drive the focus for how we proceed with the plan. Right. Good question. I mean, what we found is that the questions in that digital survey are generate pretty similar results. When does the city do a shredding? Do a shredding. Kind of like to blend those two together. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think the survey is pretty well set. I think you've got it kind of in motion. But um, I think it I think what we'll find is that what we get on these sheets, when we get from the digital surveys, the questions we ask, we add them a lot to it. You know, that we'll kind of facilitate some of the same um, kind of thoughts and results that we get from this. So it's not a bad thought. I think we might be a little far down the road to switch too much with the survey now. And it may be redundant anyways. Yeah, but I think, you know, that was there again. I'm glad we captured everybody here tonight. That helps us a lot. And if you have another group, there's a, any kind of event or uh, if there's a particular constituency that you want to get this in front of, we can help you do that too. Like we could distribute the same thing we just gave you tonight. You could hand that out with the same explanation I gave and get that and, and uh, capture it and give it back to us. So well, that's pretty much like that survey that Kathy and him handed out except with pictures for us. Right. For us right. laymen's, you know. Right. So if there's something that you want to get, like a toolkit from us, say, I need 20 of these that I'm going to hand out to my neighborhood association, or we're going to have... What about the senior center? But senior center. We can do that. Yeah, give me a bunch for the senior center. How many? 50? Uh, no, because no. there... <coughs> It'd be something I'd have to think yeah, about, Mr. Right. Bob. Yeah, yeah. That'd be something would have to be brought up. Yeah, that that yeah. I'd be overstepping my boundaries. I I need to talk before I do that. Anyway, gentlemen, thank you so thank much. You all. Thank you. Pleasure tonight. See you again soon. Yeah. Have a good evening. Thank you. Go up ahead and park, and you can say what you will. All right. That's <coughs> Mayor Brown. I think it's really um, amazing to get these two groups together. It's been a very great collaboration. It's wonderful to see some of the ideas that they have for us. And now we have the hard work of trying to prioritize and choose what we can afford to do, what we can get grants to do, and what we want to do. And not just us, but the constituents as well, the, from little bitty kids all the way up to grown people. In our community, we, it isn't. It's not just about us. It's about the entire community. So, uh, we have our work cut out for us trying to get some participation with that survey. So I'll be sending out some information, you know, Facebook posts and emails, and and trying to generate that on my on my side. And if everybody will join me in that effort, I think we can get the word out. Um, but I'm really thankful for our, our boards to have an opportunity to meet together. Because we're all cogs in the same wheel, and it's nice to collaborate. Any of you uh, ladies have a comment on the no, Greenway I side? I really agree with, with what Melissa is saying. I, I think it's really great conversation and a lot of information, and I just, it's a lot of really good opportunity for the city, for the kids, for families, so I'm just excited to see where. And we just have to really get the public on board. We need their ideas. All right. Any comments from the Park and Rec members? Okay. No, I would like to say that I do think we need to do a better job about getting that information out on the public um, on the public meetings. I don't think. Uh, and we need more than one mode of information. Not everybody's on social, uh, social media. Um, I do think a press release would be good. Uh, you get more excitement within the community to get them involved. And also, I'd like to say, I did find it very interesting to have the two, the Greenway and the Parks meet. And I would like to suggest maybe we should do it a little bit more, or maybe one, a little 
Often because there's really a lot of things that Parks and Rec can connect with that Greenway. Not all the time, but once in a while, I think it would be good for us to meet uh, as a group. Absolutely. Yeah, the, talking about the Greenway, uh, you're down to the roundabout. And that's complete, right? Mm -hmm. So what are you guys going to do now? I know you got to fight with the TWA to get it on the round. To well, wind I think up with Smyrna. Yeah, I think it's a more of a negotiation, and the I think the trick of that is to just show them what our vision is. So before we can really enter, engage in that conversation with them, we first have to have a, a clearly laid out vision. And when we go to them, if we have a clearly laid out vision that's supported um, by both boards and the board of mayor and aldermen, and it's supported with our budgetary constraints, and you know we can lay all that out for them and show them we are serious about progressing forward with that. Um, that's what it takes. So we're we're in the planning stages of that, just in the same as the park says. We have a vision, and we're trying to solidify what exactly that's going to look like before we can move forward. Wish you a lot of luck, then, sweetie. And same with the grants too. You got to have the vision. You got to have all the all the paperwork drawn out and the plans before you can, you know, get get all the grant funding and all that stuff too. Anybody Welcome else? back sometime. I I totally agree with uh, getting back to the TWRA. That's why I asked him about that. I think the park and recs and the uh, Greenway kind of go hand in hand to a certain extent. I, and as David said, uh, two years maybe is not realistic, but to me it is. But my few dealings I've had with TWRA has been stubborn at best, so I hope they can get a good rapport with them and make that happen. Uh, we want to welcome Mr. Bob back. He had to get out and act a fool and mess around with his heart and all that. So uh, we're glad to have him back. But uh, I, I'm excited, like Vice Mayor Brown said, both committees and, and that way. But we do have to try and get this out to the community. The ones that will listen will listen. The ones that want to sit back and ask the questions that don't want to commit can't do nothing for them. But, if, but we need to know about it so we can get it out. Uh, with that being said, I will One call. More thing. I'm officially retired. Congratulations. I no, I don't like it, but I'm retired. He is so I don't have anything to do during the day. You got nothing to do. Except go to the senior center. So That's if good. any of you need anything during the day, please call me. I'm available. Thank you. David, Kathy, you got anything to say before I adjourn? No, All right.